Okay, you lucky guys got uh, our lab off, so I thought to uh, keep everybody caught up, uh, especially the Wednesday lab, which is missing their lab. The other two have done it, but I thought also this would be maybe valuable for some that are struggling a little bit with, uh, with the whole title block concept and adding our drawing that's coming up. Um, so, uh, first thing I'd like you to do is go ahead and open up your title block and bring it to your layout sheet, just like this one. And then uh, you can pause the video while you're doing that and then restart it. It's always nicer if you can get in a lab where you can watch this on one screen and then uh, do your work on your laptop. Otherwise, you can just watch a little bit, pause, go do it, and then come back and continue or or replay whatever you need to do to, to get it going. So here's our, our um, title block as we left it and turned in for our first assignment and I'm going to make some adjustments to this. So to do that we need to edit the title block. So right up here by block there is an edit tool. So we're going to edit it. Block editor or B edit I guess you can say. Um, this would be my title block right here. I had a couple, I guess. Hit OK. And uh, I'm going to zoom in and actually I'm going to close that just for a second. I want to make sure I'm editing the right one. Yeah, it is. OK. So we'll come in. The first thing I want to do is I want to draw a line three quarters of an inch over to make a square right here for a page number. So I'm going to show you a new little trick. If, if I select my line tool, which I just did, and I move my mouse down here, you notice I have XY coordinates and it goes to endpoint. If I'm just set it there to endpoint and start moving it to the left, you'll notice I can key in a distance of 0.75, enter. Oops. Didn't work right there. Just go to line again and 0.75. There we go. Now it's hard to see, but you'll notice I can now pull this up until it touches this line. And I want to change my see if I can change my color on the fly and just put it red. I accidentally put that in the wrong level, so I'm just going to go. I may have done it right there. Yep. Okay. So now I have a box. I'm going to trim out these two middle ones. So again, we just hit the letters TR for trim. Hit enter. Now you have to hit enter again. Very important. Hit enter again because it's C. It says select objects or select all. If I want to trim to a specific item, I might select something up here, but I don't. I just want to hit enter. Now I can just left click and trim out anything that I don't want to keep. I'm going to do a little thievery here and uh, I'm going to take, hit escape once. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to move it right over here. And I'm going to take, uh, I'll take this. Well, actually, I want my title because this is, remember, center justified. I select this, hit copy, and I want to put that one right about here. So now what I want to do is edit this. To edit this, I want to just double click on this. It's going to get a gray shaded box on it. So double click on the text, gray shaded box, and just start typing. S-H-T-N-O sheet number. Maybe I got room. I'll put a little space right there and hit enter. Now on this one, I want to edit this text. It's going to be, uh, when you click on it, remember this is annotation or attribute text. This one's going to have a tag called uh, sheet number, question mark, sheet number, question mark. And my default will just be double zero. And we'll hit OK. Let's zoom out a bit. Everything looks OK. I go back to my insert tool and I want to say actually is it layout insert I think if I just say close block editor now 
it'll say save the changes or discard. I want to save these changes to my title block. Now you notice some things didn't show up here, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna uh, actually delete this one now. And we're gonna reinsert it from the home tab. Just go to insert title block, OK, and then just put it down in the corner and hit. Notice now I got a sheet number. We'll just hit OK. So now we have a title block with a sheet number in inches. Now here's the problem. Not really a problem. Here's the challenge. The project, first project we're going to do is in millimeters. So what I want you to do right now is go back to the model. I want you to take this and delete it. You'll notice that your layout is still here. And I want you to do a file, go up here to the big A and do save as. We're going to save it as a um, drawing template. Actually, let's just save it as a drawing. We'll use that for now. We're going to go to our template folder and we're going to put in here TB LTR ANSI. ANSI means inches or American National Standards. It's going to be in inches. If you see ANSI refers to inches. If you see the letters ISO, ISO refers to metric. So we're going to say save it. And now you can see that we're actually working in TB letter ANSI. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing I want we're going to do is set this up for our ISO file. So to do that, just go up to the big A and say new. Down here, you'll see there's some templates. They're DWT files, and there's one called ACADISO, meaning it's going to be a metric template. Just double click it. And we're going to do a file, save as, and we're going to call it TB LTR for letter ISO. This is actually in millimeters. If we go to our um, drawing utilities, look at our units, we're now in millimeters. We'll say OK. So now I've got ANSI and ISO up here. And what I want to do is um, check my layout over here. We can see I've got something different than an actual sheet of letter size paper. If I go to layout 2, I'm just going to right click and say delete that. I don't even want to see it. Layout 1. First thing we'll do, delete that. It's actually a uh, viewport. We'll put one in later. Right click. We're going to say page setup manager. Just left click on this. And we just want to modify this. You can see down here our paper size is an ISO A4. Not sure what that is. It's close to letter size, but yeah, not really sure. So I'm going to come up here and change this to a actual eight, 11 by 8.5 sheet of paper. And uh, our plot style, we're going to go to our, uh, I don't know which one I made for this one. They're all the same, so I'll just grab this, this one from. And uh, everything else looks good. Now, I do want to check this off down here where it says scale line weights. And we should do that on both of these. I'm going to set my printer to an Adobe PDF. Hopefully everything else stays the same. Letter, inches. We'll hit preview. Looks like a sheet of paper. Hit escape. So that looks good. We'll just say OK. And then just say close. Now I've got a sheet of paper. You'll notice this dotted line now shows the print boundary, the maximum size that can be printed on this. Okay, so now up here on our tab, we still have our ANSI letter size open. I'm going to go to this layout. So this is ANSI. I'm going to drag through everything. Again, just take your mouse, left click, and hold it down, and drag through the entire piece. 
you're going to do a control C. I think this is the same in both Macs and PCs. This is your copy command. Now I'm going to go to my title block letter ISO and I'm going to give you a number 25.4. 25.4 is the number of millimeters per inch. So if I do a control V I'll see my title block on the end of my cursor right there a little tiny thing. I'm going to put that right on this corner and say well that's not going to look right so we're going to click scale or you can type scale select the object hit enter it says specify a base point well we'll specify this one right here and we're going to put in a scale factor guess what it is 25.4 there's our title block for metric. So if I actually select a piece of text here, now it's really a block reference, we'll notice that our text needs to be scaled up too by a factor of 25.4. So if we had a text size of 0.1 previously, now it'll be 2.54 because it'll be multiplied by that factor. Okay? Just do a file save just to be safe. That's our template. We don't need to do anything else with this right now, but we're going to do a file, save as. Now we're going to call it back in our CAD drawings. This will be Ortho Proj 1, Project 1 Ortho. And we'll hit save. So now if we look up here at the top, we're working in Project Ortho, or Ortho Project 1. We're going to go to our model now and uh, we'll take a look at the drawing. Let me just minimize this for a second and uh, see if I have that. Might be right here. Ortho. That's the finish. This is the finished project, more or less. Thinking about it. There it is. And we're going to rotate this. document, rotate pages, 90 degrees. Here's a top view, a front view, and a right side view. This is what it will look like when it prints out. We've got our, some dimensions on here. Um, so I'm going to go back. We'll uh, close this out. Well, actually, I'll just minimize it. We may want to look at it again. And uh, have a, an image of that somewhere here. Let me just take a look. Maybe it's under my class notes for week four. All my good stuff is here. Not there though. Must be on my other computer. Anyway, I'll just refer back to the dimensions on this. It's actually a double-winged piece. I put it on Blackboard site, so you should see it. Uh, let's see how long it takes me to get to Blackboard from my home computer. Uh, let's see. Might not be too bad. I'll give it a second. But I really want you to see the, uh, the piece. Don't steal my password. amongst yourselves. Maybe they shut the server down up there too. No, nope, got it. Closing it too. I know, I know. Already plowed the road. So, come on. So now, here's my blackboard site. I 
design class. Week four. Assignment drawings, orthographic projection, JPG. There it is. So this is what we're drawing. The top view is going to look down at it from this direction down. Front view is going to look just like this arrow in this direction. And our right side view is going to look in from this side over here. All our dimensions are in place. So I'm just going to uh, stick this on my desktop. And I'll put it right in the raster images. Yeah, in case I need it again. Good. Minimize it. Close this out. So there's my drawing, my sketch up, my video recording, and we're working in ANSI. Actually, now we were working in Ortho Project, so I can I can actually delete this one, save the changes, and Ortho Project. Okay, sure. Layout still there. Good. All right. So now we're going to draw this thing. If we look at our sketch, it's 120 by 70 across the back end. So we're going to draw a rectangle using our line tool. Now, in addition, we need to create a level. You can just type layer. If you want to create this, the uh, layer we're going to create is going to be called G dash. Learn to type um, ortho one. While we're here, we'll create another layer, and we're going to call this one G dash uh, N notate dash dimensions or DIM. We're going to be working in this ortho field, and I want this to be in red. So just double clicking it makes it our active level. You can see it right here. I can also change it in this direction. But G ortho 1 will be our, our, our so we're going to draw starting with a front view profile of that square. So I'm just going to left click my line tool, or you can just type in line. We'll start it at 0, comma 0, enter. And I'll just zoom out with my wheel. I'm going to come in this direction, 120, and hit Enter. Now you notice that's really small, so I'm going to roll the XY never changes size. So I'm just going to pull this up, and I'm going to key in a distance now of 70. Here's another little trick. You'll notice that if I just come down and kiss this endpoint, and start pulling this up, it'll actually lock to that line for me. It gives me a perpendicular. One twenty. And then just come back down and touch the original point. And hit enter. Another little trick that will be helpful to you is I don't need to I want to draw another line now. It's going to be an offset of 35 from this left side. If I just hit my enter key, it remembers my last command, which was the line tool. And then if I move my mouse up here, just let it set for a second, and then just start moving it to the right, and just key in 35, enter. You'll notice I can pull this down and let it snap perpendicularly right to the bottom line. Speaking of snaps, you'll notice if I go to an endpoint, I'll just hit enter again like I'm going to draw Endpoints are squares, midpoints are triangles, and perpendiculars are just a perpendicular. If you want to see what those look like, uh, you can also find that's an endpoint and an intersection. If you type O S N A P, and do it when you need it. O S N A P. There we go. You'll see all your snap points here. We've got endpoints, midpoints, center points, intersections, extensions, perpendicular, and that's the line you just saw, and tangent, all turned on. And those are the ones you probably want to keep on by default. To turn those on, hit your F3 button. To turn them off, hit your F3 button. That just toggles 
snaps on and off. By default, they should be on. We'll say OK. Remember that command, O oh, snap. I'll hit my line tool because I think I lost it before. Just move it to the right side. Move it to the left now. 35, enter. Pull it straight down and left click. Hit enter. Now if I hit enter again, I want to draw a line 9 millimeters up from this bottom. So I'm just going to move this cursor right here, let it set. Now pull it straight up. Key in 9, enter. Oops, wrong way, sorry. Sometimes you have to move it just a little bit further to get it so it knows what direction you want. See how as I come over here it gives me the perpendicular to the other line. We're going to do the same thing up here at the top. Hit enter. Brings back my line tool. Let it settle. Key in 9. Pull it straight down. Hit enter again. Let it settle. Bring it over, 9, come straight down, and hit enter. If we go take a look at our model. You can see these are the two lines right here. should have a better pointer here. I'm just going to make my size a little smaller. There we go. There we go. So you can see this line. We created this line, a line on the other side, and a line here. And this is that horizontal piece on the base. So if I was looking at this straight from the front, I would see this face, this face, this face, and the two faces on the side. You notice now we have a circle, actually a hole drilled through on both sides at 15 millimeters in diameter. They're 18 over to the center, and the height is 40 from the bottom to the center point of the circle. So I'll go back to my model. And I'm going to share with you another tool now. If I select my circle tool, it wants me to specify a circle. Hold down my shift key out here anywhere and right click. Let go of my shift key and come up here and select temporary track point. This gives me a two point offset. So I'm going to start down here in this bottom corner. I'm going to move it to the right and key in 18. Enter. You notice it doesn't set a point yet. It actually will let me set another point now, and we're going up a distance of 40. Enter. And now it starts my circle. You just key in 7.5. That's the radius of a 15 millimeter circle, and hit Enter. Now we want to do the same thing on the other side, or we can just mirror this, but let's practice that two-point offset again. And then I'll show you the mirror option. Circle, right mouse button, whoops, escape, hold down my shift key, right mouse button, let go of the shift key, temporary track point, start here, let's set, go over 18, enter, up, 40, enter, 7.5, enter, that's it. Another way to do this, if I just delete this, would be to mirror this object, hit enter, and I can just find this center point, give it a line to mirror against, then it asks me if I want to erase the original point. By default it says no, and I just hit enter. So there's another way to mirror those circles onto the screen. We've ultimately got our top view complete. I'm going to come down here now, zoom out a ways, and I'm going to take my line tool and I'm going to very meticulously draw several lines straight up from these access points. Whoops. I'm just enter, enter, starts another line, enter, enter, and another line. Whoops. Get a set of point first very sloppy, right? Now, I'm just going to draw, take my enter key, I'm going to draw a horizontal line right across here. I'm going to hit enter, start another line, let it settle, come down 9. Then I'm going to do another one, 
let it settle, come down 12. Now, from this back line, if we look at our sketch, I know that it's 55 millimeters from the back to the front. Go back to my model, select my line tool, let it settle, go down 55, and just bring it across. Okay, so now what? I'm going to trim this, and you may want to watch this a few times because some people have a little trouble following it, plus I like to show off. So I'm going to, I'm going to trim some of this stuff out. I trim this. Whoops. Hit the wrong thing. Trim. Make sure you hit that enter key again. I didn't do that. I'm going to trim out all of these extended pieces all the way across here. zoom in on it. And what don't I want? I don't want this. 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 I want that. That one. That one. Here's our top view without the holes drilled through. And those holes are going to show up as hidden lines. So I'm going to change my color to cyan so it's a lighter weight. Take my line and notice it'll find this center point. I'll bring it straight up, hit enter, enter again, find the center point, come straight up, enter. Now, if I take my selection tool, I just hit escape, I can pull this blue handle straight up, so it gives me a kind of a line to work with. I know that I need to tr uh, copy this line, or offset it. 7.5 uh, inches on both sides. So I'm just going to left click on this, hit enter, and go 7.5 and 7.5. All right, doesn't look like much yet, right? So we're going to now just uh, we'll select this line and this line, right click and say properties. I want to check my line type. And oh goodness, I only have three. So we need to fix that. Everybody's will say the same thing. If you go to your your lines and say click it down. This this is all your line styles. By default, it only came with three. So we need to go load these up. So show all line types. Load. There's all the different line types. I want to say okay. I know I need to select them all. I don't know why they don't put it in by default. And then I want, I think I need to select these all again and just say load. Okay. Yeah, I did it once. Maybe they're already in there. I don't know. Select all. There we go. And hit okay. Now, when I select both of these objects and do a right click properties, I want to change my line type now to hidden. There's my hidden line style. And my scale probably needs to be 0.2. And maybe 0.3. See what that looks like. Good. Now this line needs to be center line. So I'm going to come down, find the center line, and we'll put our scale on that a 0.3 just to see what it looks like, and we'll close it out, hit escape. Um, probably too small. I want to make it, yeah, that, actually that's okay. So what we'll do is pull this down and pull this up. So I end up with this center mark in the middle. I could trim, but I'll just select this and just pull it up until it touches the perpendicular point on that red line. Hit escape, do the same thing over here. Just pull it down until it touches and you see that green perpendicular mark. Back up here, hit escape. Now we could do the same thing on the other side, but what's easier, I can just delete this. 
we take all of this and we're going to mirror that. Remember our center point right here? Left click, bring it down. It says, do I want to erase the original? No, hit enter. Now, these I may want to show up just a little darker, so I'm just going to change my color. And I can do it right here to maybe green. There we go. Very easy. So there's our front view, our top view, and now we're going to do our right side view. So to do that, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my line tool, I'm still in my ortho mode, and I'm going to grab this endpoint, bring it over. Whoops, change my color to red. Holy smokes. Yeah, I could have done it on the fly, but. Sorry. Just enter twice. Don't even need to go back. I want this point. Shoot. My hands messed up here. Whoops. Probably want to do that. I want to hit enter. So let it set here. And then I can just pull this endpoint out start it right there and let's see we need a back line I'm just going to hit enter and we'll just do a back line right there we know our distances now of course I do because I've done this about 15 times so it's set right there we're going to go over 9 go straight down and enter Pull it over 12. Pull that straight down. And then remember the back to the front was 55 millimeters. And pull that straight down. So now let's go back and do some more trimming. TR, enter, and enter again. And I want to trim this. And I want to trim this. And this this, and this, 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 escape Just pull this one back over so now I need to put a line let's type L enter and I want it from this point to this intersection see how it gives me a cross TR and I can trim this 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 Once it doesn't have anything to trim to, you actually just have to select it and delete. Okay, so now I need to do a hidden line. Right there. In blue. I'll just take this. And it's just going to go until it touches this piece right here. Select it. Go to properties. I want to probably, I think I made that 0.4 on the other ones. Good. So now i got to show these holes that are drilled through the back plate. If I select this and copy it, let's bring it down here. And what I want to do now is select that and rotate it. So there's my rotate tool. Just left click anywhere near the middle. You'll notice I can pull this around now. It doesn't make a copy, it's just going to... And I want to get the height of this so it matches this hole over here. Just take my move tool, find this center point, 
and I can just find the center point here you'll notice it gives me a guideline that I can just take back see how it lines right up with that and just bring it over I'll just kind of eyeball it until it's close I'll zoom in and I can just select this one and just make sure get to that per perpendicular I was pretty close but not quite So now I can see there's actually two holes, but they're lined up against each other. So now we're going to go look at our layout sheet. And we're going to look at a viewport now. Right now we don't see anything. We want to bring that model that we just created on the other side and bring it in here. So I'm just going to go to my layout tab. Over here are layout viewports. If you drop this down, I'm going to use a polygonal. Or a polygon, easier to say. And I'm just going to let it snap to these endpoints all the way around, making sure I miss my title block area. When I hit this final point, what I'm going to do is just hit C for close and enter. Now you can actually see my model. If I click down here where it says paper, it says model or paper space, I want to be in my model space. First thing I want to do is turn off that grid pattern. I can see that my scale, I can't see it. So what I want on this is a 1 to 2 scale. 1 to 2 scale will give me a half scale. In other words, it's going to be half the size printed out on the piece of paper than it actually is. Drop this down, go 1 to 2. It changes the size right on the screen. I can move it around and now I just hit model it takes me out so now I can just uh, uh, do the other things that I need to. Now on the title block itself we'll just double click on this and we're going to change our title to Ortho Project 1 hopefully that fits. Name let's see scale 1 colon 2 and then in parentheses I might just put half. We'll change the date Today is February 4th, or whatever. And title sheet number will be sheet number one. And hit apply. Now we can see all that information down here. Now that we have this set, we're going to go back and Go to our model, and we just want to put some titles underneath here. If I go to my home, select my text. I'm just going to do single line text. And uh, I'll just click here. I don't know what size it's going to be just yet, but we'll type in top view. Not quite big enough. So I just want to see what size text that is. Text size is 2.5. So let's put in oh, 7. So we know we can read it. We want to change our color to yellow. And we'll change this to annotation text. Kind of center it. Now I can just hit my copy tool and we'll copy this down. Actually before I do that let's select this again go to properties and make sure our justification on this is center justification. That way different words it'll keep it lined up from the center point. Now we can hit our copy tool here and here If I just double click this one, we'll type in front view. Oops. Sorry. I have to left click. I keep hitting escape and it drops me out. And right side view. If we go back to our layout, 
our text shows up here. Now we're not going to turn this one in because our next lab we're going to start talking about dimensioning and there's a chapter in your textbook I don't have it right in front of me but look through the chapter in the AutoCAD textbook on dimensioning we will dimension this next time before we turn it in uh, but this is what we got through in our labs and I wanted you to be able to get at least this far so if we look at this now as a print Adobe letter layout and I just say preview there's my drawing my line scales look pretty good Although they don't look as thick as they should so I'm gonna go back and escape maybe I shouldn't have turned that off That looks better. Shouldn't have done that. See, now we can see our our line weights are much better. Now, you notice I don't see my center line in here. So how, how do we fix that? Um, I believe what we have to do is type in the command P-S-L-T-S-C-A-L-E, enter, and hit zero. preview. Now what that did was it set our line scale. Remember we we scaled it by two or half scale. When I did that it scaled the line scale. So by typing in PSLT scale or um, PS line type scale is basically what it means. It will keep those together. So remember that command if you see that your line styles and your other things aren't showing up just right. We'll hit escape and hit OK. Oops, cancel that. I didn't want to print it. Uh, what we're going to do is just do a file save now so we don't lose it. The last thing I want to mention is some of you have had some issues with printing. Um, printing out to a printer, hooking up to the library. Let me show you another way to do this. We can actually go up here and rather than saying print, we can say export. And export gives us a PDF option. If I click PDF here, and I'm just going to put this in my, oh, I should have a folder here for homework PDF. Ortho Project 1, hit save. And there it is. And you'll notice, I don't know whether this works or not, but I can actually turn, this keeps my levels intact. So you can actually turn off specific levels when you export it that way. And it still maintains my, uh, my line weights and whatnot. So now the reason I mention this is because if you don't have a printer and you want to print to the library, now you can just take this PDF file that you've saved put it on a USB stick or email it to yourself, go to one of the libraries or one of the labs, um, open up that PDF reader and just print it out from there and you're going to get exactly, you should get exactly the same thing. It does pick up my border a little bit on the outside here but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about that. Um, uh, the, the other thing I noticed is it doesn't put that educational use only. Maybe I, mine's not doing that anyway. but. Let's see what happens. Now this one doesn't show educational use only, so we won't tell Autodesk this. I'm going to close this out, and I'm just going to do a file, print, Adobe PDF, and hit OK. I'm going to put it in lab work PDF. That'll work. I'm going to say test ortho so we know what to call it. It's writing, writing, writing down here. So for some reason mine doesn't uh, give me that educational so maybe it doesn't do it on either one but uh, or maybe I'm just special I don't really know. Um, but that's what we're doing. 
that little image I've posted both of these up on the screen so you can get all your dimensions if you can't take them off from that uh, this is what we were going to do in lab anyway today some of you in the other two labs may just want to look at this for a refresher I'll post it on blackboard and you all have a good weekend and I'll send you up some assignments uh, a little bit later on so have a good one